the Williams family looked like the picture of happiness. John, with his charming smile, was a successful businessman. Emily, his elegant wife, was a devoted mother to their three beautiful children, Sarah, David, and little Emma. Their house stood proudly, a symbol of their prosperity. Neighbors saw laughter and togetherness. They saw family barbecues and happy children playing. But behind closed doors, a different story was unfolding. A story of fear, control, and agonizing silence. The truth was a tightly held secret. The smiles were masks. The laughter was a performance. Behind the facade of perfection, the Williams family was held captive by John's volatile temper. Every family member walked on eggshells, terrified of triggering his rage. The children learned to be invisible, their needs and desires pushed aside. Their home, instead of being a sanctuary, was a battlefield where love and fear were tragically intertwined. John's anger was a storm cloud, always looming. It darkened their home, casting a shadow over every interaction. One moment he could be charming and playful, the next he would erupt, his words like weapons. You can't even get dinner right. How hard is it to follow a simple recipe? He would yell at Emily for the smallest things. A misplaced item, a burnt dinner, even her tone of voice could set him off. His control extended to every aspect of their lives. He dictated Emily's clothing choices, her spending, and her interactions with friends. He belittled her opinions, making her doubt herself. John's behavior chipped away at Emily's spirit, leaving her feeling small, worthless, and utterly alone. Sarah, the eldest, was a keen observer. She saw her mother's pain, the fear that flickered in her eyes. Sarah became her protector, her small shoulders carrying a burden no child should bear. Dad, please leave mom alone. I'll do anything, just stop. She often intervened, trying to divert her father's anger, becoming the target herself. David, the middle child, retreated into himself. He sought solace in books and video games, creating imaginary worlds where anger didn't exist. The constant tension manifested in nightmares and bedwetting. I wish I could just disappear. Sarah, the youngest, was too young to understand. She only knew that sometimes, her father's voice became loud and scary. Her laughter would cease, replaced by trembling lips and wide, frightened eyes. The violence, though often hidden, left invisible scars on each child's soul. The constant fear left them anxious, withdrawn, and robbed them of their childhood innocence. The tension had been building for days. The air was thick with unspoken fear. John had been drinking, and his words were laced with venom. You think you can just ignore me, Emily? Answer me. Emily tried to stay calm to appease him, but it was no use. His anger escalated, and soon the yelling turned into something more sinister. John grabbed Emily's arm, his grip bruising. He pushed her, sending her crashing into the wall. Sarah, witnessing the scene from the top of the stairs, felt a surge of terror, but also a newfound determination. She knew she couldn't stay silent any longer. This time, she had to act. Slipping into her room, Sarah grabbed her phone. Her small hand trembled as she dialed the number she had memorized for emergencies. Please help us. My dad is hurting my mom. As the operator answered, Sarah whispered those words that would change everything. Section 5. Finding Refuge. The First Steps to Freedom. The arrival of the police was like a break in the storm. Their presence, though intimidating, brought a sense of relief. Emily, her face bruised and tear-stained, finally felt a glimmer of hope. The officers, trained to recognize the signs of domestic violence, ensured John left the house that night. They guided Emily, her voice trembling, as she explained the years of abuse. With the police escorting them, Emily and the children left their home, seeking refuge in the night. The shelter was a safe haven, a place where they could finally breathe. It wasn't much, just a small room with bunk beds, but for Emily, it felt like a palace. It was a sanctuary, a place where they were finally safe from John's reign of terror. For the first time in what felt like forever, Emily allowed herself to hope for a better future. Section six, a beacon of hope, finding support and strength. The shelter became their lifeline. It was more than just a roof over their heads. It offered a network of support that Emily so desperately needed. Counselors provided a listening ear, validation, and practical advice. They helped Emily understand the cycle of domestic violence and empowered her to break free. 
She learned that she wasn't alone, that her situation wasn't her fault. Support groups, filled with other survivors, provided a sense of community and understanding. Sharing their stories, their fears, and their triumphs created a powerful bond. Emily began to heal, drawing strength from the shared experiences of others who had walked a similar path. The children, too, found solace in the shelter's programs. Art therapy and playgroups provided a safe space for them to express their emotions and begin to heal from the trauma they had endured. Healing from the trauma of domestic violence was a long and arduous journey, but Emily was determined to create a better life for herself and her children. I was haunted by memories and burdened by guilt, but I found solace in individual therapy. I learned to process my emotions, to understand that my father's actions weren't my fault, and to find my voice again. David, who had retreated into himself, slowly began to emerge from his shell. Family therapy sessions provided a safe space for the family to communicate, to rebuild trust, and to heal together. The counselor helped them understand each other's perspectives and taught them healthy coping mechanisms. I was too young to fully grasp the complexities of the situation, but I benefited immensely from the stability and love surrounding me. With each passing day, we started to rediscover our laughter, our joy, and our sense of security. Life after the shelter wasn't easy, but I faced each challenge with newfound strength and resilience. I found a job, a small apartment, and started to rebuild our lives, brick by brick. The children, inspired by their mother's courage, thrived in their new environment. My confidence returning, I excelled in school and became a pillar of strength for my younger siblings. No longer weighed down by the oppressive atmosphere of our old home, I blossomed. I made friends, discovered a passion for soccer, and my laughter filled our small apartment. Surrounded by love and stability, I blossomed into a happy and carefree child. We developed new routines, new traditions, and most importantly, a new sense of normalcy. Our home, no longer a place of fear, became a haven of peace, laughter, and love. The Williams family story is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. It's a powerful reminder that even in the darkest of times, hope can emerge. Their journey highlights a universal truth. Domestic violence thrives in silence. It's a secret that festers and grows in the shadows. Breaking that silence is often the hardest but most crucial step towards freedom. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, please know that you are not alone. It's not your fault, and there is help available. Reaching out for help is not a sign of weakness, but of immense strength and courage. Remember, you deserve to live a life free from fear, a life filled with love, respect, and dignity. Breaking free from the cycle of domestic violence can feel overwhelming, but there are concrete steps you can take to reclaim your life. One, acknowledge the abuse. The first step is recognizing that you're in an abusive situation. Domestic violence isn't limited to physical abuse. It includes emotional, verbal, financial, and psychological abuse as well. Two, reach out for help. Confide in someone you trust, a friend, family member, therapist, or a domestic violence hotline. They can provide support, guidance, and resources. Three, develop a safety plan. Create a plan for emergencies, including a safe place to go, important documents, and a bag with essentials. Four, contact a domestic violence organization. These organizations offer a wide range of services, including shelter, counseling, legal advocacy, and support groups. Five, know your rights. Understand your legal rights and options, such as obtaining a restraining order or pursuing legal action against the abuser. Remember, healing takes time. Be kind to yourself and celebrate every step you take towards a brighter future. You are strong, you are worthy, and you deserve a life free from violence.